In the last video, we were looking at, we started off looking at this circuit here, and then we used a source conversion to convert it to this circuit, and we had determined the voltage at the three top nodes of 48 volts, 16 volts at this node, and 10.67 volts at this node. Now what we're going to do is go back to the original circuit, this is an equivalent of it, and determine what the mesh currents are. Then when we do that, we'll determine what the currents are here based upon our node technique our results and compare the two results. And also, we have to be careful now because in this circuit where we replace the voltage source with the current source, the magnitude of that current source is this voltage divided by this resistor divided by that resistor divided by that sum, 240 divided by 12, which comes out to be equal to 20 amps, and then the resistor that's in parallel with that current source is the sum of these two resistors. So what we're going to do is determine the mesh currents, and then we have to be careful thinking about how we're going to determine the currents through these two resistors here when we use the node technique. So we'll handle that part of the problem as well. For right now, we just want to simply determine what are the three mesh currents. So we have here, and we always, using the format technique, we always start out by drawing the mesh currents in a clockwise direction. And this is I1. I2 and mesh current I3. So now let's write down the mesh currents and again doing in so doing we're going to use the format technique that we had developed in some of our uh, previous videos. So here for mesh current I1 we are going to have this 9 plus 9 is 18 times I1. And then for this resistor here, I1 goes down, I2 is flowing in the opposite direction, so we have minus 6 times I2. And now here, we're depicting I1 as going into the battery, so you can think of it as flowing across a uh, voltage drop, going from a small voltage drop to a large voltage drop, in this case from minus to positive. So we indicate that positive voltage drop by writing it on this side of the equation as a positive number. Now for mesh current I2, we have 6, 10, 16 times I2. And for this resistor, we're going to have minus 6 times I1. And for this resistor, we're going to have minus 6 times I3. And in here, in this loop, there is no voltage source present, so that's equal to 0. So there's our second mesh current equation. Now let's move on to the third one. Here we have 6, 7, 9 times I3. minus 6 times I2. And there are no voltage sources present here, so that equals 0. So we have three mesh equations we want to solve for, for current 1, current 2, and current 3. So three unknowns, and we have 
three equations to work with. So we should be able to solve for them without too much difficulty. Let's see, here we have 18 times I1 minus 6 times I2 plus 0 times I3 equals 240. And here we have minus 6 times I1 plus 16 times I2 from here minus 6 times I3 that equals 0 and from our last equation we have 0 times I1 minus 6 times I2 plus 9 times I3 that equals 0. So here then what we do is what you've seen us do in the previous videos we to determine the values for I1, I2, and I3 using the method of determinants first step is to form the 3 by 3 determinant by making by using the numbers in the I1 column, the I2 column, and the I3 column. So we have 18, negative 6, 0, and here we have negative 6 plus 16, negative 6, and here we have 0, negative 6, plus 9. So let's just quickly determine the value of this determinant. Here we have this equals 18 times the numerical value of this 2 by 2 subdeterminant by covering up the row, cover up the column. We have 16 minus 6 and then negative 6, 9. Then it's minus the next number in the top row, which is negative 6, so that becomes plus 6 times, and now we cover up the row that it's in, cover up the column, and we have negative 6, 0, and negative 6, 9. plus the third row, or the third number in the top row, that's 0, so it stops right there. And let's see, here we have 16 times 9, I think it's 144, minus 36, that's 108, and then here we have minus 54, minus 0. So that's minus 54. So the numerical value of this determinant is 18 times 108 minus 6 times 54. And let's see, go to the calculator. Um, it looks like this is 19 44 minus 300 plus 24, that's 324. So we have 1944 minus 324, 0, 2, 6, 1, 16, 20. So the numerical value of this determinant right here is 1000. 620. Okay, now knowing that, we are set up to determine I1, I2, and I3. And we have that just written out right here.
Here then was the 3x3 three three matrix that we formed by using the numbers in the I1, I2, I3 columns, and that was equal to 1620. And here we have this row of numbers, or this column of numbers, and these are just simply what the equations were equal to. Uh, measure current equation number one was equal to 240, and the other two were equal to zero. Now, to determine I1, we replace the I1 column with this column, and we get this 3x3 three three matrix. I1 is equal to the numerical value of that matrix divided by 1620. And use the steps like you just saw us to determine the numerical value of that determinant. I1 comes out to equal 16 amps. And to determine I2, we replace the I2 column with this column. This column and this column stay the same. So we now have this 3 by 3 determinant. Find its numerical value, divide it by 1620, and I2 equals plus 8 amps. And I3, replace the I3 column with this. These remain unchanged. We get this determinant, determinant's numerical value, divided by 1620, and you get plus 5.33. So the plus signs tell us that back here, when we were assuming that our mesh currents were flowing clockwise, indeed they are. If, for example, this one was going in the opposite direction, then we would have had a negative sign when we determined its numerical value. But they're all positive, and I1 is equal to 16 volts, or 16 amps. I2 should be 8 amps. And I3 should be 5 and a third amps. Okay, now finally, let's look at the two circuits then. And let's compare our results and see what happens. Let's say that we want to determine then say the current through IR4. So here we have that's right here. That's just simply 8 amps going in that direction. So And now these results are from the mesh current analysis. Okay, what about IR6, the right one? IR6, the right resistor. What does that equal? Here we have 8 amps going down. Here we have 5.33 amps going upwards. So we have 8 amps going down. And here we have 5.33 amps going up. And that will be 2.67 amps. And that's going downward. So 2.67 amps of current through this resistor, and it goes down. OK. What about through this resistor? And that's just simply going to be 5.33 going down. And, oh, this resistor, that too is going to be 5.33 going to the right.
Okay, and through this resistor, we have 16 amps going down and 8 amps going up. So I R6 left, the left resistor here, that is equal to 8 amps. And that goes down. And then for here, for these resistors, it's going to be 16 amps for each the third, this resistor and this resistor. Okay, now let's take a look at our results from the node analysis and compare and contrast the two. And it looks like we might not be able to make it all the way through in this video, but let's at least get started. Let's start with this resistor. Here we have IR6 left, and that current will equal 48 volts divided by 6 ohms. And that equals 8 amps, and this is plus 48 volts, that's zero, so that goes downward. So that is consistent with what we found from the mesh current analysis. Now, what about, say, IR4? This resistor. Here, on this end, it's at a voltage of 48 volts. Here, on this end, it's at a voltage of 16 volts. So now, we have the current will equal 48 minus 16 divided by 4. And that equals 32 divided by 4 equals 8 amps. And this is 48 volts at a positive value. 16 volts at a positive value is going to push it in that direction. And again, that is consistent with what we determine using the mesh current analysis. Now what we want to do is go ahead and determine the current through these other resistors and then think about, well wait a minute now, in our original circuit we didn't have this, we had this. And how can we determine those currents based upon our node voltages. And we're not going to have time to finish that in this video. Come back, join us in the next video, and we promise we'll get this whole problem wrapped up.